welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I am Jessie. Thank you so much for coming and watching today. Today's video is going to be a what's for dinner video, guys. So hopefully you'll get some good ideas for some stuff you guys want to try for you and your family. So let's get into the recipes, guys. Tonight's dinner, we're making meatloaf. You're going to need one pound of ground beef. You're going to want breadcrumbs. You're going to want mayonnaise. This might sound like a weird ingredient, guys, but trust me. It really helps keep your meatloaf from drying out and just being like a hard loaf of grossness. <laughs> so we've really enjoyed putting that in our meatloaf. And then you need an egg. I am using the guys, this barbecue sauce is like, I mean, I am a Sweet Baby Ray's fan through and through, but this stuff reminds me of my childhood. It's delicious. It's the Casey Masterpiece Kettle Cooked Sweet Honey and Molasses Barbecue Sauce. It is fantastic. I don't remember if I said an egg, an egg, <laughs> onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and a diced onion. So let's get to making this. I also forgot to mention, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our onion. In the bowl she goes. Your ground beef. Guys, I always buy my beef in bulk and then I put it in the freezer bags and then I label and date it and stick it in the freezer. So nice, budget friendly. So put that in there. And then you're gonna wanna put in some pepper. Guys, season this how you would like season like any of your other like hamburger dishes. Uh, I'm just doing it to taste for our, well, my family. <laughs> so, all right, salt, garlic powder. Onion powder. I'm going to go a little lighter on the onion powder because I do have onion in this already. All right. And then your egg. All right. And then you're going to put mayonnaise in. Guys, Duke's is the best. Let's be real here. It's fantastic. So this is a half a tea, uh, half a tablespoon. Jeez, Jesse, can't talk tonight. <laughs> half a tablespoon. Nothing new there. <laughs> and you're gonna put four tablespoons in. I don't have a clean tablespoon, so this is what we're doing. I lost count, guys. <laughs> Go figure. I'm going to say that's good. If, you know, I was smart, I could have probably just used, well, see, that's, I, I'm being lazy tonight. I don't want to clean dishes. I'm going to do have my husband do it after dinner. So, uh, I, yeah, I would usually use like one fourth cup, but uh, it's dirty too. So, because one fourth cup equals four tablespoons, and yeah, so. We're just gonna say that's good enough. <laughs> All right, now that we got that in there, we're gonna add in our breadcrumbs. At one third cup of breadcrumbs. That's why I didn't really season the meat too much because these are Italian style, so that's got seasoning in there with that. So perfect. Now we're gonna mix this up. I'm not gonna make you guys watch that because I think mixing meatloaf's disgusting. <laughs> so once I get that done, I will come back and show you what I put on top. All right, guys, now you're gonna grease your pan with some canola oil spray. It wouldn't be Jesse cooking if I didn't forget to tell you guys something you needed. <laughs> That's why uh, the recipes are always down in the description for you guys. I'm doing this one handed because my other hand is a meat hand. It's all gross. So, all right. So, slide that over so you guys can see what I'm doing. Then you're going to plop that bad boy in there. And we're going to form him into a loaf. Get my sleeves out of the way. You just want to make it into a loaf shape. I've done it in a loaf pan too, but um, my husband prefers it cooked like this. So instead of in the loaf pan, I don't know guys. There we go. All right guys, now we're gonna top it with our barbecue sauce. Here's 
just want to make sure it's covered. Perfect. All right, you're gonna put it in the oven for anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. You don't want any pink left in there. Guys, this meatloaf looks fantastic. Look at, it does not look dry at all. It looks fantastic. I hate like dry meatloaf, guys. It's a big pet peeve of mine. But this is what's for dinner tonight. I'd show you the side, but that is part of a collaboration video I'm doing. So you'll have to come back on November 5th to see what I make. So tonight's dinner is super easy. Uh, I got a rotisserie chicken when I got my groceries. I will link that grocery haul down below for you guys. But I grabbed some rotisserie chicken. I shredded that. I left about uh, one fourth of it to one third of it in the lid because I don't want to dirty another bowl and I'm just going to mix everything together in there. And then I put the rest in a freezer bag and I'm using that for a later dish. Um, barbecue sauce. You're going to want to take the barbecue sauce. We're going to mix it in with that. You're going to need two, one container of the crescent rolls and do the barbecue chicken and cheese. And then the other one, I'm going to do pepperonis and cheese because my kids don't like chicken. So that is what we're going to do. And I will show you. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're going to want to take cookie sheets and line them with tin foil and then spray them with your cooking spray. I'll set those aside while well, we're going to mix up our barbecued chicken. So you're going to take your shredded chicken from your just history chicken. And then I'm using this Masterpiece Sweet Honey and Molasses Barbecue Sauce. Guys, this stuff's fantastic. I'm usually a Sweet Baby Ray's fan, but this stuff brings me back to my childhood. So I've really been enjoying having this over Sweet Baby Ray's lately. So you're going to want to put a decent amount in there because you're going to want to coat your chicken. And we're just going to mix it up. Perfect. Oh my gosh, this smells <laughs> so good already. Okay, so once you have that done, you're going to set that aside. We're start working on the rolls. You're going to take this. I have fear of these cans, guys. Ooh. <laughs> talking about it's like the little elf thing that have you ever seen the part in elf the movie elf where they have the jack-in-the-box and do, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah not my thing <laughs> all right let's take these out of there perfect you're gonna want to unroll them Set that guy to the side there. All right, separate them like that. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put your cheese down. So I'm just gonna put a little bed of cheese for a chicken to sit on. Take your barbecue chicken and you're going to place a little bit of it on to each one. take this and we are going to roll it and then set it aside just like that. I'm going to finish up with these and I will be right back. All right guys, so this is what they look like all rolled up. So this next part is optional. You don't have to do it, but I think it adds a lot to this dish. So you're gonna take your cooking spray and you're gonna spray just a little bit on top of each of your rolls. And then you're gonna take Parmesan cheese and you're gonna sprinkle 
just a little bit on top of each one. And then we're gonna take some parsley flakes. I'm gonna sprinkle the parsley flakes on top. Guys, these look gourmet, don't they? That's what I like. All right, we're gonna put them in the oven. This says to cook them for nine to 12 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do. And while those are baking, I'm gonna work on the next batch. All right, guys, now we're gonna work on the pepperoni ones. So you're gonna take your other can. Hopefully this one doesn't pop open like surprise like the other one. I don't know, we'll see. Ooh. Ah! <laughs> it gets it every time. <laughs> All right. Those kind of look funky, but I'm sure they're fine. Got like a white mark through them. Almost like it didn't get like mixed like the dough all the way. That's okay though. Gonna lay them out like we did the other ones. We're gonna take our shredded cheese again. Put a little bit of shredded cheese on each one. And then we're gonna take our pepperonis. Yes, there's kids in the background. I have kids, so you're going to hear that, and I'm completely okay with it. Mom life. I'm going to take like two to three pepperonis per one. I think I'm just going to do two on these. Oh, maybe three. Go for three. So why not? Everybody loves some pepperoni. And then you're going to take those and do the same thing and roll them up. same thing with these ones but these ones I'm not gonna add pepperoni because my oldest guy does not like it or not add cheese sorry he loves pepperoni he doesn't like cheese so I'm gonna leave those without cheese all right guys so here they are I made two with just pepperoni and then I just rolled two crescent rolls up and then the other ones have pepperoni and cheese I'm gonna get these in the oven all right guys I got a phone call so I can show you when the other ones got out but uh this is what my kids are having a banana yogurt the crescent rolls, their vitamins, nighttime vitamins, and then I me and my husby, hubby both have two each. So yeah, this is dinner tonight, guys. Looks delicious and fantastic, if I do say so myself. And we are gonna go eat. Tonight's dinner, we are going to do uh, uh, cream cheese, chicken enchiladas with the green sauce and some jalapenos in them. It's super delicious, so you're gonna need tortillas, you're gonna need cooking spray. You're gonna need one or two cans of enchilada sauce, the green kind. Jalapeno peppers diced, or if you don't wanna do those, you could do the diced green chilies if you're not a very spicy person. Uh, I shredded a rotisserie chicken recently, and I'm using the rest of that in this recipe. And then cream cheese. Oh, and the shredded cheese. Can't forget that. All the cheeses, guys to do is you're going to want to take your cream cheese and you're going to put it in a microwavable safe dish and you're going to soften your cream cheese in the microwave. I feel like these are always the hardest things to open and I've said this and I will say it time and time again. <laughs> they need better packaging. Oh, there we go. Get in there, perfect. All right, I'm gonna pop that in the microwave at 10 to 20 second increments until it is softened. 
All right, guys, this is like the perfect consistency. You want it soft enough that you can mix all of your chicken in with the cream cheese. So now I'm gonna take all my chicken here. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna use all this. There's a lot there, guys, but we'll throw some in. I'm gonna call it good. That's probably like two cups of shredded chicken. You could just boil it or bake your chicken and shred it if you don't have rotisserie chicken. But guys, rotisserie chickens are so great for that because you can just do so much. You can make, you know, chicken salad. You can put some buffalo sauce and make quesadillas. You could do my barbecue chicken crescent rolls that is also in my what's for dinner video this week. Or these. Perfect. Exactly what you want to see. Okay, next what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your green chilies, or in my case, I'm using jalapeno peppers because we love spicy. And I drained them. You're gonna put that in there. And then you're gonna mix this all together. This is such a simple recipe, especially using rotisserie chicken. It's just something you have to mix together real quick. Roll them up, pop them in the oven. Uh, I need a... <laughs> Speaking of oven, I need to preheat mine to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I usually always do that before I start cooking, but I've been pretty busy today, guys. I filmed a, uh, not a grocery haul, it was like a Dollar Tree, Dollar General haul with some Christmas stuff. Guys, that one, if I haven't posted it yet, you guys are going to want to watch that one. Super good finds, guys. If I did post it, I will link it down below for you guys so you can go watch. Perfect. So that is all combined together. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our baking dish. We're going to spray that. You're going to take your tortillas of ever kind, you guys. Like if you're doing low carb, these are great. I'm not doing low carb. But I like these because they're low on calorie. 70 calories for one. Fantastic. Only six net carbs. I'll get the other ones sometimes, but I just felt like grabbing these. I wanted something a little lower calorie. Perfect. So, take your tortilla. You're going to take some of your mixture. Place that on there. Okay, good, you can see. All right, place that on there. Keep in mind, you're gonna be filling, I think there's eight, yes, eight in here, so don't put too much. Cause I wanna make sure you have enough for all of the tortillas. Guys, you could take this mixture, put it in a baking dish and make a dip out of it too. I think that would be really good. I love cheese, guys, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little of my shredded Colby Monterey Joe cheese on the inside. And you're gonna take them and you're gonna wrap, oh guys, that's what I forgot, hold on. Jesse always forgets to do something or forgets an ingredient. So I have two cans of the green chili enchilada sauce. We usually use one can because I don't like a saucy enchilada, but my husband does. And he's been having a hard week, guys. So I'm gonna be nice, wife, and put two cans. So I'm gonna put this can on the bottom. I put the holes in my cans instead of taking the lid off because my can opener just doesn't like these cans for some reason. I always struggle and have issues, so I've just learned to just go ahead and poke holes in them. Otherwise, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's just never good. I never get it open. It gets halfway open, and then I get frustrated. I end up poking holes in it anyways. So, there we go. One can on the bottom. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna roll it, and place it in the baking dish on top of the bed of enchilada sauce. Take the chicken mixture, plop it on there, same thing. I am gonna roll these up, put them in there, and then I will be back. 
All right, guys, look how fantastic that looks. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our last can of enchilada sauce and you're gonna cover the tops of these guys. Pour it on there. <laughs> Songs always pop into my head, guys. <laughs> Just pour some sugar on me, but this is more like enchilada sauce. <laughs> I entertain myself too much. Perfect. That one guy didn't get a lot on there. Well, we'll just grab a spoon real quick. No big deal. Shake some of that. Get it on that guy so he doesn't get too roasty while the other ones stay soft. Should have probably left that one for me. <laughs> I don't like it's so saucy. You're gonna take your shredded cheese and we're gonna cover the top. Do as little as cheese you want. You don't have to put cheese on top if you don't want to. Do what you like. It's your kitchen. I will say if you're doing this recipe a little bit healthier, you could always do like a lower fat cream cheese. Like the Newfintel cheese, I think it's called. Don't I, uh, guys? I probably butchered that name. <laughs> um, or you could um, do like the low fat cheese. I will say, low fat cheese does not melt very well. So just keep that in mind if that's what you do. You could always use dairy free cheese. That stuff sure doesn't melt from what I've heard. But do what you like, you know, or whatever your dietary needs are. That is what that looks like, and we're going to put it in the oven at 375 for 25 to 30 minutes. Guys, these are going to be so good. Yum. Fish, I just put some sour cream on top of mine, and this is what's for dinner tonight, guys. Guys, so tonight's dinner is going to be meatballs in the crock pot. I got this idea from Blended with Love and Adventure. I will leave her channel in the video that she did this in linked down below for you guys. So we're going to do meatballs. I have a big bag of frozen meatballs that I need to use up. And we just need a quick dinner because we don't do Halloween around here. Uh, we don't like scary stuff. So instead we do Christmas tree day. So we're going to be putting our Christmas tree up. So I need to just have a quick, easy, fast dinner. Also, we have to leave our house at four o'clock in the morning tomorrow to drive to Iowa. So we need a quick um, meal. We are headed to my father's house. We're gonna do a little Thanksgiving thing slash a uh, little early birthday party for my daughter Rowan. So uh, you're gonna need meatballs. I'm gonna put a little dash of sugar because whenever you do anything with spaghetti sauce, I have to put a little bit of sugar in it. Uh, any kind of broth you have on hand, you're going to need that. Uh, pepper, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and basil leaf. This is basically what Anne used in hers. And I just tweaked a few things by adding the sugar and the beef broth. But uh, we will show you guys when we get in the crock pot. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our meatballs. You could use fresh or whatever kind you guys have on hand. I just have a bunch of these that need to use up. I think that's the amount I'm gonna do because I don't wanna make too much and have too much leftovers. And then I can just use the rest of these meatballs another time for another meal. All right, next you're gonna take your spaghetti sauce. I am using the Francisco Rinaldi tomato, garlic, and onion. And we're gonna take that and pour that all over the top of our meatballs. Guys, I think it needs a second jar. So with all the meatballs, I needed more sauce. So I'm gonna use a second jar of the Francisco Rinaldi. Pour that on. Cause I want this to be a little bit saucier. We're gonna make some meatball subs with it. So I think that'll be really good. So she suggested turning your jars upside down, which is great. But like I said, I have beef broth that I need to use up. So I'm gonna scoot this back so you guys can see what I'm gonna do. Nope, oh, I almost dropped ya. 
So you're gonna take your broth and you're gonna put it in your container. Just enough, like probably like half an inch on the bottom. And I'm gonna do that on each of them. Yes, there are kids playing in the background. Mom life. Enjoy those sounds of cute little children playing. <laughs> I do, it's life, you know? All right, so take your jar and shake it. And it gets all the extra sauce. And some people would put water in their jars, guys, but I feel like that just waters down what you're making. And this adds extra flavor to your sauce and makes it so good. So I'm gonna do the same for this one and shake it up. Then we're gonna move this back. We're gonna take this. And there we go. See, it cleans it up pretty good. This one. Perfect. And then before I add all my seasonings, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up to make sure the sauce is incorporated on all of the meatballs. And to get that beef broth kind of mixed in there. My mom, whenever she would make spaghetti sauce, she would actually use like beef or chicken bouillon or even sometimes both in her sauce. And it just gave it such a depth of flavor that is so different from most spaghetti sauces. And it's a way to uh, jazz up a jar sauce, you know? All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of salt. We're gonna add a little bit of pepper. And then basil. I liked this idea because she was saying she doesn't like Italian seasoning in hers. And I'm not a big fan of that either. I love basil. So that's what I like to do. And then garlic powder. I like garlic, so I'm going to go a little heavier. And then onion powder. I don't think I mentioned those were homestyle meatballs too. So that's why I'm adding a little bit more like of those Italian flavors into mine. And then I'm gonna add some sugar. Don't worry guys, I have clean hands. I'm just gonna throw out a pinch of this in there. And we're gonna mix this all together and then we're gonna turn it on low for eight hours and then dinner will be ready guys. I'm starting this super early in the morning here, so It'll be ready probably like four, four o'clock, five o'clock. They like to eat dinner really early. So there we go. It's all stirred up and we're gonna put the lid on it. And I cannot wait to see when it is done. And I will show you. All right, guys, and here are the meatballs. They've been sitting in this delicious sauce, cooking all day. Uh, we turned it off probably, like, uh, we probably only cooked them for, like, six hours, I want to say. And then we turned them on warm, and they've just been sitting there. I stirred them up before I showed you guys, and they look fantastic. I'm super excited for dinner tonight. All right, guys, so what I did is I took my hoagie buns. I put a little cooking spray on it, sprinkled it with garlic, and cooked it on pizzazz for five minutes. And then we're going to assemble our subs here in just a minute. All right, guys, now we're going to assemble our meatball sandwich. So I've got my toasted bun here. I'm going to take some of these delicious meatballs. Put them in there. Guys, this looks so good. Perfect. Maybe take a little bit of that sauce and drizzle it on there. And then I'm going to take some Kobe shredded cheese because I want some cheese on mine. I'm just going to sprinkle it on there. And give it a minute because those meatballs are pretty hot so it'll melt that cheese pretty quick and i will show you when it's done wait for a few seconds because i am starving and i don't have time to wait for this to melt but this turned out fantastic and i cannot wait to eat it this is what's for dinner tonight guys for dinner we are going to make a little homemade chicken nuggets so i'm going to take those chicken tenderloins 
bread them with that. We're gonna have buffalo chicken rice roni. You need butter, milk, and water for that. And you need some canola oil spray to grease your pan and we'll show ya. All right guys, so we're gonna start on chicken. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I saw. It works really well, especially with these little things. So you take your fork and you put it there and pull that through. And you pull it out, look at that. Kind of gross. But then you don't get that nasty tendon throughout your strip. I'm gonna do that with the rest, guys. I have my ring, it's over there. I took it off because I'm dealing with chicken. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that with the rest of these and then I'll show you what I do next. All right, guys, so uh, we had to use this paper towel and it got a little complicated and it does tear your chicken, I've done it before. But guys, getting that tender out is just amazing, or the uh, tendon out. It's just so much better because if you run into that tendon, it's just disgusting in my opinion. So that's what we like to do. I could cut it out, but you just lose so much more chicken that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these into little bite-sized pieces. Also, my oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to get these cut up and then we're going to bread them. And then I'll be back when I get it all cut up. All right, guys, we got that done. I washed my hands, and I'm going to take the garlic parmesan coating. It comes with, like, a little baggie. You just open that up. And then it comes with a seasoning pouch. It comes with two. I'm just going to use one first and see if I'm even going to need the next one. I don't know if I will or not. Ooh, it smells really good. This is the first time trying this brand, oh, the great value one. I've used, like, shake and bake before, but this would be really good. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the second pack in there, seeing how much is in there, guys. I've done this enough times, I know that I'm going to need both. It comes with two plastic baggies, too, but I'm just going to throw it all in one. take our canola oil spray. I'm going to spray in my pan. You don't want it to get stuck to the pan. You're going to take your chicken, throw it in the bag. I'm going to do little batches so make sure they all get covered. I'm going to plop it on your pan. Not sure if you can see that, but hopefully. Kind of can. There you go. I'll show you guys too when I'm done. All right, guys, they're all done. That is what they look like. I put a little extra burning on. I probably will burn, but that's okay. I'm not really in the mood to cook anyways tonight. So this is going in the oven. So as you're supposed to put it in for 25 to 35 minutes. We will do 25 because we got little mugs. Boom. Guys, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna follow the box instructions from Michael. Oh, Other said from microwaving, and then I'll show you guys when it's done. Guys, here is the chicken nuggets. So yeah, guys, there's extra breading on there. It is what it is. It'll still be delicious. Like I said, I'm just not in the mood to cook tonight, guys. And then we got the buffalo rice cerrone. This is our first time trying it. I will leave a little thing here saying whether we liked it or not. And I will show you when it's all plated. All right, guys. Here it is plated. We've got the chicken nuggets, uh, the buffalo rice cerrone, and then chicken dipping sauce. You can get that at Walmart. It tastes like Chick-fil-A sauce. Super good, guys. So this is dinner tonight. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming along with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some ideas. Uh, what do you guys leave down in the comment section what you guys have for dinner this week? All right, guys, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, click that little notification bell button so you're notified every time I post a new video, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.